Hi everyone and welcome to our latest installment of our Pivot Artist uh, interview series. This week we are joined by Jason Garcia. Um, he's a Santa Clara Pueblo Tewa artist and uh, we're just really happy to talk to you today. Yeah, thank you everybody for listening in and tuning in to the um, the little Zoom cast uh, brought to you by the wonderful po folks in Colorado, Durango, and Pivot Exhibition, and looking forward to it hopefully opening physically, and, you know, if it doesn't happen, if we do it um, uh, online, you know, we'll, I'm sure you can experience it um, secondhand, I guess, but, you know, still yet to, it, it's good to at least see the work and things like that, but I know that the, um, the exhibition has been physically hung, and, um, Everything skateboards are on the wall and, you know, doors just need to be opened and it hopefully everything works out that, that, um, hey, you know, with the current situation that's happening today and, <laughs> and by the past couple of weeks that everything, you know, will, will go back to quote unquote, it's normalcy and things yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. But again, thanks for tuning in and, you know, yeah, enjoy thanks for this joining us. And, th and thank you to, um, Dwayne and Landis for inviting me to participate in the exhibition. I had a lot of fun creating the pieces and the work and things, so. Yeah, I'm just gonna jump right into questions because okay, we're cool. all so, curious for these questions. Uh -huh. um, so how did you join the Pivot Show? I know you just mentioned that Dwayne and Landis invited you, but what was that uh, like? Yeah, so um, you know, I've known Dwayne for a couple years, several years, and then, uh, known no Landis for for several more. Um, Landis is actually my um, my brother-in-law so that's kind of how I knew Landis and knew his work and everything like that and uh, so knowing him through family and then being introduced through to Duane uh, several years ago and then um, just being involved in different uh, native art markets and things like that um, seeing one another knowing one another you know friendships growing and then also like I said, of, of being connected through family and, and friends and things like that. And then there's been a couple times where I've participated in different um, museum exhibitions there at the uh, Museum of Northern Arizona in Flagstaff, where the Pivot exhibition was actually formally held. Well, I guess where it actually opened up. Mm -hmm. at, and, um, and then meeting with Duane prior to... Um, the pivot exhibition open. I think I actually picked up decks there. I think we had coffee there at late for the train and, and I picked up the decks from him. So, um, you know, it, 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 it's just a lot of fun of, of creating, you know, skateboards working in a different medium and the kind of, I, I haven't really worked in acrylics too much. And um, the first, the first deck, that I had done for the show was done in mineral, mineral pigments that I used to paint my um, clay tiles. So it's uh, mineral pigments that's gathered in different areas of New Mexico, Northern Arizona, Colorado, and then um, painted onto the deck and then it's sealed. And then that, that particular deck was in the first exhibition at Museum of Nor Northern Arizona in Flagstaff. And then that one sold to a collector and so when the show opened up at Diné College, I worked on another two decks and then delivered it out to um, Diné College there. So the two decks are, are, are um, sp specific to the Diné College show and then the, uh, uh, the show there in Durango. Um, and as kind of a follow-up, um, what does Pivot mean to you it has a lot of meaning to Dwayne and Landis and we're kind mm -hmm. of getting everybody's take on it. Yeah so it's interesting you know of looking up in the um in the dictionary to see what what the actual word pivot means so you know the 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 dictionary um uh, meaning for the word pivot is a fixed point supporting something which turns or balances or a person or a thing on which something else depends on and then also it means to change your opinion, statements, decisions, et cetera, so that they are different from what they were before. So I think part of the Pivot exhibition is, you know, I've had experiences with skateboarding, you know, skate, 
skating as, as a teenager and seeing skate culture evolve over the years from different um, skaters like, um, you know, the old um, Doghouse and Stacy Peralta and Powell Peralta and, and um, Steve Cavallero and Tony Hawk and, and, you know, those, those early days, Christian Hasoy and things like that. So remembering, you know, those guys when they were, when they were young and then also still following them on, on Instagram. And so kind of just seeing how their, their careers have, have changed or how they've, they've um, turned and things like that. And then also just styles of skating. And then my, my son, and then, you know, as, as I got older, I kind of, drifted away from skating and then my son started picking it up and my my daughter also and so you know they they skate on occasion um so there's there's that 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 popular i, I guess just of it being part of popular culture and, and and um doing it and then seeing other artists where that's become mainly like their main medium like um uh douglas miles and apache skateboards mm -hmm. And um, and then just, I think just kind of getting out of the, the, the um, I guess kind of breaking that mold, breaking that paradigm of, of work that I've done in the past is all pretty much clay ceramics. And then work on paper. And then the second, the first skate deck that I did was painted with mineral pigments, which is more um, quote unquote my style in that sense. And then the second one that I started on, the two that I did are, one is uh, Tewa Tells the Suspense Deck, which is, again, kind of my signature style. And then the Avanyu, the Water Serpent Deck, is actually based on um, Steve Caballero's Dragon Deck. So, you know, that, the Water Serpent is, is, you know, a water dragon. So it's it's reflects the the um like the um the kilts that's worn in the buffalo dances and other other dances in the pueblo and uh so it's using some of those color color um color i guess you would say color combinations and things designs but then it's it's based on you know a, a deck i i know a couple of, um former skaters like myself that saw the deck and they said you know oh that's a Steve Caballero deck I know it that's where you got your inspiration right and so you know again it's just using that of, of something that people know recognize and then just kind of you know pivoting turning in in a different manner or a different way or a different perspective and things like that and and so I think that's that's part of you know what that pivot is and then also pivot is also I think learning how to deal with with again like I said the the um, current situations at hand in terms of you know Black Lives Matter movement which is really uh, really turning a lot of things uh, upending a lot of things on its head and then also with the um, COVID-19 pandemic that's also another thing turning turning it on its head and trying to work or work around or work within certain boundaries of museum openings cancellations <laughs> sickness dealing with kids at home um working from home i know i know i have a bunch of um printmaker friends that are are either teaching in college or their students and being not allowed to work in their studio. So they're working at home and trying to figure out how do I create a lithograph without my studio at a you know major university, major printmaking program. And so then they're looking, searching for used um, presses and, and then they're creating their own studios in their homes and things like that. So that, that I think that's also that, that pivot of changing, you know, of changing your your methods of working to fit how how you would normally not work or 
or maybe that's how you're going to start working because I know there's a couple mm -hmm. friends that once they started their home press then they're like I don't need a, a, a you know studio I can do it at home and things like that so you know they're they're starting their own presses and things like that so I think I think that that's part of it of how you know we're we're constantly um, changing constantly evolving traditions changing um, how, how we work differently or even like that of, of, of myself of where the first deck I had was sold and then I created two more decks and then my goal was to work on another two one to two decks for the show in Durango but then my priorities kind of changed once once my daughter um, started going to homeschool and she was here every day and I wasn't taking her to school. So priority shift and things such, you know, priorities have that pivot and things like that. So I, I think that's kind of where, where that, where the word pivot means to me of just, of just changing and working and, you know. Yeah. Shifting a lot of the um, shifting you do. Of, yeah, shifting a lot of things. And then even now yeah. of, of where I've had multiple museum exhibitions or gallery shows and we've done online um, talks, we've done online shows, we're sh completely shifted to just the gallery and selling work online. And then cancellations of major shows like the um, Native Treasures in Santa Fe and Santa Fe Indian Market. So that's another part uh, part of of piv pivoting of, of what do we do now? Do we just focus solely online, or do we do maybe a home show, or yeah, do we go Very on a vacation? <laughs> yeah, it's relevant. really interesting, like all of the ways that we have to navigate our mm -hmm. external environment now. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, a, you know, pivot is very relevant to what's mm -hmm. going on in just the whole world. So I'm really happy you touched on that. Right. Exactly. Um, and normally, I, I, normally what my probably, what if, you know, if asked, if, if everything was quote unquote normal, or if it was like 2019, if we were in May 2019, <laughs> my normal thing would be all, you know, Durango is only three and a half hour drive from Santa Clara. Like I'll drive up there, I'll do the interview. We can talk about the decks. We can see them in person. We can do a walkthrough, and you know those type of things. So that's probably normally how I would work. But you know now since we're here, I'm in my studio in Santa Clara. Uh, you look like both of you are at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know. Yeah. Well, pivoting from that, my next question is, um, how did you first get into art? Yeah, that's always an interesting question. Everybody asks. That's, that's been <laughs> It's a classic, yeah. I, I, that's a classic question. Uh, so just being fully immersed in a creative environment, um, both paternal, maternal sides of the family are artists, whether they're traditional craftspeople, jewelers, painters, potters. Um, so that's, that's pretty much where, where a lot of my, um, you know, cre creativeness comes from. Uh, again, like I was saying, you know, with Santa Fe Indian Market, my, my grandparents were participating in the, in the early, early days of formation and my parents and then myself as well. Um, and always just being encouraged to, you know, be creative, whether it's drawing, um, making scale models, um, going, going to school, music, 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 musicianship. Um, and, and so it's, it's pretty much a, a daily part of my life. There's not, or it, it ha always has been. So, um, you know, sometimes people, it's like Newton, you know, where the apple falls on his head and say, that's when he discovered gravity. You know, I never had, you know, the, mm -hmm. the apple hit me on the head. It was always, the apple was always there. So, um, yeah, so just growing up in that environment, the environment, creative environment. So. 
I'm kind of jumping around on us. Yeah, no problem. Uh -huh. um, so I think it's kind of interesting thinking about you as an artist, as a native art artist influenced by your Pueblo culture, but like you're, you have this really um, comic book style and, and you talked a bit about being at your board, being influenced by contemporary, like the mm -hmm. skateboard and whatnot. So just like, maybe tell us more about like how you've been influenced by comic books and other pop culture mm -hmm. items and how that's reflected in your work and how you've brought uh -huh. like the native influence into that. Yeah, and, and again, that's one of those things of, of being immersed into popular culture at a, at a really young age of, of having an older brother and then older brother introduces you to comics or music and certain things you, you kind of are influenced by what they like and then you kind of maybe drift away from what, what they like or their, their interests and then you kind of go, go your direction and, um, seeing going going to the movies and seeing um star wars or superman and um star trek the motion picture and so you know all the science fiction and things like that or or going to my my aunt's house to spend the night with my cousin and you know we have sleepovers and then we'd be watching like ultron or um, you know different samurai movies and then i remember going to um the summer programs in here in Santa Clara Pueblo in the daytime, they'd feed us lunch and then we watch like Bruce Lee movies in the afternoon and things like that. So yeah, I think that I'm so, so, you know, there's all these influences and then um, my parents being artists, we go uh, gal different galleries um, that, that uh, uh, featured their work or, or represented their work. We would go out to maybe Cal California or, um, <clears throat> Colorado and you know we get to the city and we go first thing we would usually do was open up the phone book and then you know go to bookstores comic book stores and then kind of research where that that shop was if it was within walking distance of where we were at the gallery we would walk or if not then you know we'd have our parents um, take us and you know go go spend you know a couple hours or or um, uh, one of the galleries in, in Colorado, we used to go up to Vail pretty often in the early early to mid 80s. And then we'd come back through Denver and um, we'd always say like, let's stop at Mile High Comics in Denver. <laughs> I think uh, Chuck Rosansky is the owner and he has this superb, amazing, huge collection of Pueblo pottery. And he has a really amazing large collection of uh, Van and Layla's uh, work and um, and and so you know he's still a collector he's a friend of mine and things like that so you know even now we still you know make make trips to to comic book stores and so you know that that's never those things have never really changed of of um, of being interested in all that so you know those things are influencing my work um, you know you write or you paint what you know. So growing up in the Pueblo and you know, you're painting maybe a dancer and then you're painting Spider-Man or you're painting G.I. Joe or Luke Skywalker. And so, you know, those things just start to mesh after a while. And then you start seeing similarities between stories like, um, mm -hmm. you know, Seven Samurai and Kurosawa, and then you start thinking about uh, migration stories and creation stories, and you you see how an artist or a comic book artist is illustrating um, the or like Jaime Beto Hernandez, and and they're doing Love and Rockets, and they have this whole script or this story of villages and people. And you think, in looking around, you know, as I look out the window, I'm like, there's stories of Santa Clara Pueblo that easily tra translate over, or Tewa historical events that are just as heroic as Superman and Batman and 
the Avengers and things like that. So, you know, just making that, that connections and things like that and wanting to represent um, that in a comic book format. Again, you know, there, there, there's not really much separation from, um, uh, of, of, uh, again, it's one of those things like, what's the first comic book you read? Uh, you know, probably, possibly Little Orphan, Little Orphan, or what is it, Little Orphan Fanny or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's those or, um, you know, just different, <laughs> just, just different ways. There's no, I, again, it's, it's hard to say when, when did that occur, you know, because it's just always been there. And it, and it still continues to be, to be there. So again, it's just making the connections between, you know, our, our stories, our migration stories and, and, you know, comic book stories, origin stories, you know, how did Spider-Man become Spider-Man? How did Peter Parker become a Spider-Man? You know, or how did the Pueblo revolt start? Or what was, you know, what were the steps that led up to it? Um, so those, those are some of those things. Yeah, all those influences and commonalities. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy you referenced Love and Rockets because that's my husband's favorite comic book series. <laughs> so I'm like, this is the first time I understand what's going on. And I know our <laughs> vacations look very similar to like finding all the comic book shops nearby, so. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Or even um, there's been a couple of trips that I made where they've been specific to saying like, okay, well, if I'm going to do this visit, can we do it this week? Because they're having a comic convention in exactly. that, same city that same week. So, you know, kind of kill two birds with one stone type of thing. So. For sure. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. I know that a lot of our audience was excited to hear your perspective. And I know when we've given sneak peeks to people in the gallery, your boards have a lot of buzz about them. So it's mm -hmm. exciting to learn more about them. Mm -hmm. um, let me give all my Instagram slash handle shout outs. Um, you can follow Jason at Okupin Studio on Instagram. It's O-K-U-U dot P-I-N dot studio. Um, see more of his awesome art, all of his other projects, his pottery. It's all amazing. Um, you can also find out more on Pivot at Pivot underscore skateboard underscore deck underscore exhibit and follow us at the Center of South Coast Studies on Instagram at Center SW Studies FLC. We wanna give a huge shout out to the LPEA for helping get us some grant funding to bring Pivot to the Center of South Coast Studies and to our lovely crowdfunding donors. Um, like you said, we really are excited to have people finally see this exhibit, whether it's through you know, online or in person someday. But thank you so much for talking to us. Yes, thank you for chatting. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy it.